Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 501. What is fibromyalgia and how does BioBalance Health treat it? BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Fibromyalgia has been a disease that is diagnosed kind of like Alzheimer's. It's diagnosed by elimination of all other options that they can find. If you don't have this, but you still have these symptoms, you don't have this, but you still have these symptoms, you don't have that, but you still have these symptoms, you must have fibromyalgia. And for the longest time, it was thought of as an emotionally caused disorder. And so the standard treatment was an antidepressant. We'll give you an antidepressant and you go and heal your psychic wounds and this problem will go away. But now medicine has done more research and has more information and they have a better handle on what fibromyalgia is. And depression, anxiety, stress still are component factors, Mm -hmm. especially if you suffer from uh, or did suffer from a significant level of childhood trauma, almost any kind of childhood trauma, sexual trauma, abandonment, physical abuse, uh, emotional torture. If, If you grew up in one of those homes, the odds are higher that you will be an adult that suffers from fibromyalgia. But still the population of people that have been diagnosed with fibromyalgia is predominantly female over 40. So that there are those components that we've always known about and we still try to respond to and treat, but medicine has found other things that we wanna talk about to know uh, today to help you to know what's going on with somebody that has fibromyalgia and what are treatments that help. So, so the, the scientific and physiologic background, mm-hmm. biologic background of what is going on when you go through a trauma or you go through a severe illness or you have a death of a parent or one of those triggers that are, we consider psychological but impact us physically, physically yes. is that you, you live in a hyper um, stress state. So you have too much cortisol, you have too much adrenaline, you have too much of all of the um, adrenal and hormones. not a surge, just over a long just, period of time. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, just go up and come down like it was meant to. In That's crisis. What I, in yeah. crisis. I mean, now that when you have had that kind of trauma, you have all all the time you have this high level of cortisol. All the time you have high level of adrenaline until your adrenal and your brain hormones wear out. And after that. That is when you start getting symptoms of fibromyalgia. Now, that's also common with a s- different disease, which is more um, more co- caused from low cortisol only. But this is a disease that actually affects your nerves. And your nerves are had been at a, such a heightened state that they overreact to touch. Well, if you, you touch somebody with fibromyalgia, they jump and they hurt. I mean, they can't. Right. They can't be Pain stroked. Sensors. They can't be touched. They have a hyperstartle, which is common with abuse, but they also have their pain centers are still hyperactive. So they have that in common. And that's the most common, the most common symptom that is, makes them different than adrenal fatigue or Addison's disease. And that is hyper pain sense when, when you get touched. Mm-hmm. But serotonin is, helps or actually helps stop the pain sense. These folks have low serotonin levels. That's why the antidepressant works. Right, because a lot of them address serotonin levels in the brain. Right, so and this you, is helping them, right. not just to be not depressed, but not to hurt. Right. So that's why so we give antidepressants for well pain. well a physical pain management as well as an emotional pain management. Right, right, and so it's a, it's a twofer. But, but many doctors don't really think of it that way. They just think, oh, that just means we're fixing the depression. Mm-hmm. They don't think that means we're fixing the pain. So that's, those, are, those are current treatments, which is an antidepressant. But there's other things that we can do. So if you go to the physician, and again, they, there's not a test that we know of right now that they can give you like a blood test or 
a brain scan or something like that, they can say, okay, this is what's wrong, you have fibromyalgia. It's a cluster of symptoms that you present with, many of which are also presented in other illnesses. And so they have to try to distinguish among them, is this because of A, B, C, or D? And those symptoms and signs are uh, fatigue, fits, severe fatigue. People that suffer from fibromyalgia are always reporting that they're almost too exhausted to get out of bed. They, they just don't have the energy to clean their house, to do their laundry, to cook meals. To, to even I'm, Back when I was practicing, uh, I'd have clients that would come in that would, would sit there very lethargically and say, I didn't have the energy to come here today, but I'm here. I don't know how I got here. Mm -hmm. And because they're just always so exhausted. So lack of energy, always tired, uh, severe fatigue, trouble sleeping. They report that they're not able to get a good night's sleep. And, and one of the standard responses of medicine is try to regulate your sleeping mm -hmm. patterns. Your circadian rhythms matter. Mm -hmm. And if you can go to sleep uh, at, in the late evening and sleep until early morning, that's better if you can do that consistently. And so you need to try to do the things that will let you get a good night's sleep. But they report that they can't get a good night's sleep. That And they... And the sleeping pills that we have nowadays don't work. The old sleeping pills that they consider um, pills that would cause you to be addicted mm -hmm. are are going are really uh, better. But they don't give those to you because they don't want you to become addicted. They to have the a higher pill. level of drug content. Right. Yeah. Well, they just have a higher level of of um, relaxation. They actually get you into a, a good sleep. Mm -hmm. the, you know, we used to give Valium, Xanax, you know, we can't do that anymore. But, but there are other things that people do try and it may help. I mean, things like uh, we talked in a recent podcast about uh, binaural audio programs mm -hmm. that you can download on your phone and mm -hmm. listen to soothing sounds at night that may help you relax, at least if not go sound to sleep and, and get into uh, alpha mm -hmm. sleep mm -hmm. it, to calm you down and soothe you. It's almost hypnotic. And so you listen to the sound of rainstorms or thunder mm -hmm. or beaches, you know, waves crashing on the but beach. But behind it is this other sound. Subliminal. Subliminal sound that is talking just to your brain and getting you into sleep. I mean, I use that. It's called um, brain waves. And they have different apps for, di for learning. They have a different app for sleeping and for disturbed... Um, disturbed emotions. They have... Trying they to have, regulate your brain waves. Right. And it's just working through this funny kind of um, kind of weird sounds that stimulate different parts of your brain through your ears. Right. So, so through your hearing. So I do, I wear a headset and do that when I can't go to sleep. Mm -hmm. And that's just, I mean, if you're worried about something, it works as well. So, so, so people wear headsets for sounds and CPAPs for breathing <laughs> and eye shades for light. <laughs> like putting your head in a box to yeah, try to go to sleep. Yeah, I hope you don't have to do all those things. <laughs> yeah, hopefully you don't, but but often they do. So mm -hmm. depression and anxiety or other symptoms, memory problems and trouble concentrating. If you can't uh, focus on trying to solve a problem, pay your bills, uh, put together a, a menu for shopping to go to the grocery store and buy for the food that you, that you need for your menus, those kind of things, it, it, doctors call that a fibro fog mm -hmm. for fibromyalgia. And I think that, that really that comes from the adrenal not putting out enough um, adrenaline or epinephrine, which is kind of how we treat ADD. We, tr we treat ADD with those medications because sometimes the lack of concentration or focus has to do with not enough of those brain chemicals. So uh -huh. they treat, sometimes they treat the fibro fog the same way, although we have a better treatment that treats all of this. Okay. So, and we usually start people not on antidepressants. We start them on replacing their testosterone and their estrogen if they need it. Yes. So these are the things for for the women who get it after menopause, which is common, or after the age of 40 is common. And more women get it than men. What is it, 70, uh, 40 to 70 percent right. are women. And then um, they also get migraines, tension, headaches. No, 40 to 70 percent are the ones that also have oh, the like GI, GI symptoms. symptoms. It just says that most, most of the people that are diagnosed are women, mm -hmm. and they are women older than the age of 40. Right. So so those are people without any testosterone because their ovaries are gone. One of the other symptoms. And that, that helps. One last one we didn't, we didn't mention mm -hmm. yet is uh, muscle twitches and cramps. Mm -hmm. And what the current research is beginning to show is that testosterone, if you replace mm -hmm. the hormone testosterone to normal levels for when you were younger, that it has a nociceptive capacity, mm -hmm. which means it, it helps fight pain. Mm -hmm. And so if you're having muscle cramps and twitches that are painful, 
and you replace your testosterone, there's a good likelihood that that will help reduce the level of pain that you are feeling. Or if you have the typical, oh, it hurts here, then it hurts here, then it hurts here, then it hurts all over, you know, your pain moves in mm -hmm. different muscles. Mm -hmm. If you have that, then that is also treated okay. with testosterone. A lot of people come back after their first dose and go, well, I don't have that anymore. I mean, they've been dealing with this for years, and then this treats all of these different things. Yeah. I mean, it increases your... Um, epinephrine, norepinephrine in your brain. It increases your your um, nerve response in terms of being able to to block out pain. It makes you less sensitive. Right. So, so let, let's go through for a minute some of the alternative mm -hmm. diagnostic mm -hmm. categories that doctors have to consider. Am, mm -hmm. am I looking at Lyme's mm -hmm. disease? The symptoms mm -hmm. that this patient is presenting, mm -hmm. could that be Lyme's disease? It could be Lyme disease. So then we have to do blood tests for Lyme disease. If, right. if I mean, so you can get back if, a definitive no about Lyme disease, right. but you can't get one about fibromyalgia. Right, that's true. Okay. And a lot of a lot of autoimmune diseases look like this as well. Uh -huh. And so autoimmune diseases get better with testosterone as well. So it's hard to tell what they have, but auto but you can do blood tests for autoimmune diseases and see if they have an autoimmune disease. And then another category is chronic viral infections. Now I don't know that I understand what chronic viral infections mm -hmm. are as opposed to just a virus. Well, usually people with chronic viral infections. Um, have have been fighting a virus and can't get rid of it. It's kind of, it's kind of like uh, there's a herpes, herpes virus that you can't get rid of. It's not the same kind that gives you oral uh, lesions or um, sexual or the area of the vagina or penis. They don't. It's not the same as that, but it's kind of an all body herpes infection, uh -huh. and it gives you many of these same symptoms. It has a different. The, the white counts different. The cortisol level is different. I mean, it has distinctive things. And so you, you can, can do a blood test for that Right, as but well. it's so hard to heal. I mean, yeah. even testosterone doesn't heal that as well as we want it to. Right. But that's a reason to be in pain and depressed and exhausted. So we have to rule that out, and it's hard, it's hard to rule that one out. Right. Uh, so, yes, <laughs> go. <laughs> well, no, I, I thought there were, well, the other one was depression, which we've already mm -hmm. talked about. And we've it, talked it, about that. So. Yes. So they, um, in the International Journal of, um, excuse me, the Journal of International Immunopharmacology, March of 15th, they started saying, oh, this is a novel treatment. We use testosterone now for chronic pain of fibromyalgia. Mm -hmm. And we know that when people have chronic pain and we give them testosterone, they do not have as much chronic pain, even if they still have the problem like uh, spinal stenosis. Th they'll still have, for that, that's a anatomic problem they'll still feel pain but it won't be as bad they won't need as much pain medicine yeah and for fibromyalgia generally that's helped through the brain and also through the nerves and the muscles so so it works everywhere so when we started we were talking about the fact that it's a diagnosis by exclusion mm -hmm. you exclude Lyme's disease you exclude all these other mm -hmm. things uh, chronic viral infections depression and so then um, Blanking. Some oh, things we can't for for testosterone. You can do a blood test mm -hmm. on somebody that has fibromyalgia, mm -hmm. and you get results back that mm -hmm. say they have low estradiol, low testosterone, mm -hmm. and low growth hormone. Right. And so the combination of those three lows mm -hmm. comes in tandem with a diagnosis of fibromyalgia. True. And so you can replace mm -hmm. the testosterone, the estradiol, and you can use a secretagogue to increase the body's own production of growth hormone. Mm -hmm. And when you balance those three hormones the way that you do at your office, mm -hmm. many of those people report that the more crippling symptoms of fibromyalgia cease to, to bother them. That's true. And it works centrally. It increases the neurotransmitters that, that are involved in all of those in all of the fibromyalgia symptoms. And so one of the challenges for what you do generally mm -hmm. at your office as, as a hormone replacement specialist, but also for the treatments of fibromyalgia, the, the literature says pretty strongly that what is required for an accurate diagnosis of fibromyalgia is cross-specialty information. <laughs> and so you, you, if you're not following all the literature in all these different journals, if you're not uh -huh. staying up on the research, if you're, and, and I don't mean in any way to diminish anybody's specialty, but if you're just a general practitioner, you just have your doctor's office open and people come in and say, hey, what have I got? And uh -huh. you haven't specialized and you haven't acquired the specialty knowledge, uh -huh. then your ability to diagnose this accurately is more limited. And, and you have to be stay up on it because if you graduate if you graduated in we'll keep 19 something, yeah. then you didn't learn this stuff. 
Right. This is 2015 when these this research came out. Okay. But if you like my uh, when I was in OBGYN, I thought the only journal I had to read every month or the only journals was Reproductive Health and the Green Journal, which is the OBGYN journal. They don't print anything outside, or they didn't print anything outside of those things written by OBGYNs. But when I started doing this in 2002, I realized that there is there is information about testosterone and what it does in, in neurology journals and in endocrinology. There's tons of it in endocrinology journals, and they've just this year said, oh, yeah, women need it. I mean, after saying they didn't, so they did an about face this year. And then it's also in the psych journals. It's also in it's psychology journals and right. immunology and, and psychiatry and yeah. autoimmune. I mean, I get I get people sending me um, doctors sending me things from their journal that has to do with testosterone and how it works and how it fixes certain things. So this is, I mean, to me, it it fixes the most things. I think the problem what a doctor would say to me if I said. Well, the testosterone is low, the estrogen is low, and the growth hormone is low. They say, well, it, it goes down with age with everybody. Right. And that's true. Well, but which brings up another chronic it does, issue. It's not everybody. But is, is the level of dosage. And you know, mm -hmm. doctors disagree on whether you give just a minimum amount to attack a symptom or you give more mm -hmm. than the minimum amount. You know, what's the well, correct atta volume? attacking the symptom uh -huh. is really the key phrase because okay. they don't give enough to attack the symptom. Mostly when we're talking about hormones, thyroid, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone, they just give just enough to make you not want to kill yourself, basically. Mm -hmm. I mean, not want to die. I mean, that's, that's how they think about these, about hormonal replacement. That's sufficient. That's not how we think about diabetes. It's not how we think. I mean, we don't give just enough insulin so that your blood sugar is not 400. We get we try to get you back to a normal blood sugar so that you you don't damage the rest of, of your um, organs like kidneys and liver and brain. So right. we try to get you to normal, but we don't use that with. Well, because hormones. then they can say, well, we have a kidney machine we can put you on. Yeah, we? but but see, that's the point. We, we we're that's, trying to avoid all that's, that. We as a patient and as a doctor, I don't want to put people on that kind of treatment. Right. I want to stop it first. Right. It's like taking your blood pressure medicine so that you don't get kidney disease, so you don't end up on a kidney machine. I mean, some of these things are preventing preventable. Preventing diseases, preventing diseases, not treating symptoms. Right, and we're preventing and treating with this because right. fibromyalgia is basically a scream for help. Your body's screaming, I'm in pain, I need help, I need, right. I need to get my hormones back, I need my nutrition, I need my sleep, and, and the hormones help you sleep. So the general medical response that you have at BioBalance Health when you look at hormone replacement is you give them testosterone, uh, E2, which is a type of estradiol, estrogen, pregnenolone, and growth hormone stimulation, because you right. can't give growth hormone. But we don't do it all at once, right at the beginning. We start with estrogen, testosterone, then we and pregnenolone. And right. then if that doesn't completely resolve their Bring symptoms, some that, and we look at their growth hormone, IGF-1, if that doesn't get completely better, then we, ha then we look at that and, and actually replace that, not replace it, but stimulate the, the growth hormone. But you also then have non-medical treatments that you provide, yes. things that you encourage people mm -hmm. to do in terms of lifestyle choices uh, and in terms of supplements for their diet. So mm -hmm. can we walk through some mm -hmm. of those? Yes. So, All right. So you can, you can start. But sl set sleep hours at least eight hours every night if you can. So we try to do different things to help you modulate your sleeping so that you are able to sleep a solid and consistent eight hours. If your sleep patterns are all over the board, one night you can sleep four hours, the next night you can sleep eight, the next night you don't sleep at all, then that's not going to help you with fibromyalgia or many other health-related issues. The better you can be about watching your circadian rhythms, eating a healthy diet, and having a healthy sleep pattern, it's all done, can be done, by you and your behavior changes and your, your coping strategies, than by medicine, by taking a pill to go to sleep or a drug to wake up or you know, regulate yourself up down with an external intervention. We want to avoid that as much but as we can. But I don't think that works alone. I think that works with our treatment. Absolutely. It, no, I no. mean, if you do that, great. But I don't see people people who come in and have these symptoms. They've already tried these things. Right. But we want this con con concurrently with what we're doing so that we can get the best response with the lowest dose. Uh, the second thing is a dark sleeping environment. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in America today, so many people have televisions in their bedroom, and they turn it on, and they fall asleep watching television, and then it's on during the night. Mm -hmm. Your body still receives some of that light stimulation 
uh, some of that frequency stimulation that doesn't help you be able to sleep. You don't make melatonin. When, when you I was need me to darkness for melatonin. When I was in private practice, and I would get 40, 50, 60 year old men who were suddenly alone after having been married for a lifetime. They either lost their partner through death or divorce, and they're trying to adapt to living alone, which is something that they've never done as adults. I would always encourage them, do not put a television set in your bedroom. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna get up and watch TV, go in the other room, turn on the TV. When you get ready to go to bed, go to bed. If you can't sleep and you get back up, get back mm -hmm. up. But don't put a TV in there and have that TV running all night, every night, because of all these ancillary mm -hmm. issues that come up, like melatonin, that, that interfere with your ability to be healthy. Mm -hmm. So a Especially lack of, if you're an older man. That's right. And, and all you have to do is turn out the lights. I mean, that's a pretty easy thing. Right. Uh, unless you live in Alaska or something where you have the 24-hour yeah, days. Far enough north, yeah. So um, I, I try to uh, ask patients once they starting, start to feel better, not before, mm -hmm. to progressively increase exercise, if, even if it's just walking briskly around the house and then walking around the, the neighborhood or, the, or, their, or past that, going to the high school and walking on the track something that increases their their activity level which does make them feel better mm -hmm. if they're also being treated and doing these other lifestyle changes and, and then things like meditation mm -hmm. good meditative practices will help you uh, nutritional supplementation and there's a whole list of things that you recommend for a healthy yeah. diet and nutritional supplements that you can acquire uh, and these are medical grade supplements. It's not just mm -hmm. something you go to the drugstore and pick up off the shelf. That's true. You have to, I mean, you never know what you're getting if you're just picking up some brand on Amazon. So you have to be sure that you're getting a medical grade to know that you're actually getting what you what is written on the bottle because they, they can't police all of that. A lot gets, gets th through the cracks. So yeah. um, vitamin D and K and zinc are really important to people with fibromyalgia. So that's the first thing I put them on. If we're progressively going through uh, supplements, then if they have a high cortisol, which they might because they're still in that hyper stress stage, then I give them endodrine one in the morning, which is animal adrenal to calm down their cortisol. If they have low cortisol, I give them two in the morning to increase it. So that's basically, and sometimes more than two, but to increase it from low. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of supplement it. Yeah. And so that lets their adrenal rest. And so that it can recover. They do that for six months, and usually we try to get them off. Some people have been stressed for a lifetime, can't come off. They have right. to keep taking it. Right. So um, the lipo C, which is an is a intense C vitamin, uh, is very important for, for getting better and getting your, your brain function better and also helping your immune system. Fish oil, flaxseed oil, all of the methyl B vitamins. Um, and then we go to... Magnesium, because it's a muscle relaxant, so you don't get muscle spasms. We go to um, L-arginine, because it's a vasodilator. It dilates your blood vessels. So that, that helps get oxygen to, to all the areas so that you're not hypoxic. So, so these things are not prescription medicines. They are supplements that you can get, and you can get them anywhere. But what mm -hmm. we recommend is you get them from a doctor's office that provides medical grade. Medical grade meaning they have consistent, measurable uh, dosages that you buy one today and you buy one tomorrow it's gonna to be exactly the same as far as the chemical makeup and the security of the production process is supervised and maintained in mm -hmm. ways that you can determine or that, that are determined by the inspector just like prescription just like prescription medicines are. so all of these things can help you if you suffer from fibromyalgia there are treatments don't just accept that it's a depressive problem and you need an antidepressant you are in pain, your body doesn't allow you to exercise, you are exhausted, you can't sleep. You need things to help fight that. And what we recommend at Biobalance Health is get your hormone balances restored, then follow the non-medical suggestions that Dr. Maupin's office will provide to you in terms of supplements, in terms of sleep patterns, in terms of exercise and diet. So that could help you enormously. We wish you well. Thanks for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. 
Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.